So uh, you might know that I use Tempo as my calendar replacement app. Uh, Tempo is, for, is a company, a startup that came out of SRI, which is where Siri came out of, the internet came out of, uh, HDTV came out of that lab. A lot of cool stuff in our world came out of there. And I'm talking to the CEO about calendars and what's next for uh, Tempo right now. Who are you? Uh, my name is Rob Singh. I'm the founder and CEO of Tempo AI. Yeah. And then tell me a little bit about your background for uh, people who didn't see our earlier video. Yeah, sure. Uh, long time mobilist. Uh, I've been doing uh, mobile apps for the last 10, 15 years. Uh, most recently, last few years, been really thinking about context and the future of assistance. As you mentioned in your introduction, I was an EIR at SRI. Yeah. Um, uh, really thinking about where assistants are going, predictive computing, we're seeing the first layer of it, and uh, with Tempo, we're really trying to push the envelope of bringing this sort of business assistant uh, yeah. out to the masses. Yeah, so. I use it in all my talks about my book, Age of Context, uh, be, because it it goes into email and even out on the internet and finds stuff for your sure. meeting that makes your meeting more enjoyable, right? Absolutely, yeah. No, So I think the the key sort of revelation, we've talked about this before, is calendars an expression of intent. Yeah. It tells you where you're going, who you're going to meet, what you're going to do. And we think it's a great UI metaphor, the calendar itself, for delivering an assistant experience. So um, a lot of our focus has been in trying to understand all the little bits of your calendar uh, so we can deliver to you more contextual information. And where we're going is now trying to correlate that with everybody else. Yeah. So. The, the competitive landscape has really changed since the last time we talked. We, we just interviewed Timeful, which is a new calendar that puts tasks in there. And a lot of people praise Sunrise. And there's a whole bunch of choices when you go to the App Store. How, how does the competitive situation look like to you? Um, you know, I think we've, we've tried to stay very true to our focus, which was building an assistant for the mobile business professional. So somebody's mostly on the road. Uh, having meetings and trying to help his life, uh, the meeting warrior. Um, I think there's a uh, category of just sort of alternative calendar experiences, and there's uh, quite a number of them, and you can download them in the App Store for sure um, if you're looking for a different UI or a different aesthetic. Uh, but our sort of uh, value prop has always been about saving you time and reducing taps, uh, reducing stress, uh, you know, li like an assistant, uh, learning about you and completing tasks for you. Yeah. Uh, and we, so we've stayed, we've stayed pretty focused, focused on that. Uh, certainly, I think there are uh, larger companies that uh, recognize that there's opportunities here, Salesforce and LinkedIn and Google uh, and others, and this is a high value sort of persona. So uh, that's definitely part of the competitive landscape, uh, or ultimately could be. Uh, but uh, um, there is your gen you know, generic calendar quadrant. You can go do that. Uh, calendar for us is really just a great UI metaphor. Assistant is a layer. It's much more than just sort of a category. Yeah. It it's got to be tough for you because you have people like, you know, an executive who is scheduled every hour of every day is scheduled by either uh, her or, or him or uh, their assistant, right? When I met with Bill Gates, literally every 15 minutes was scheduled <laughs> yeah, sure. in his day, all the way into the evening, all the way at breakfast, right? right. From morning to night, his life is scheduled and it's on a calendar and it's really detailed where he needs to be, who he's meeting with. All that fun stuff, and then there's people like my mom and my wife who uh, uses it sporadically. The right. doctor appointment, dentist appointment for the kids, or a, a parent-teacher conference, or something like that. R real sporadically, she she doesn't put every hour of every minute, right. you know, or a, every hour on her calendar, right? Are you for both people? Or are you really going to focus on the business person who really does? tend to schedule meetings a lot. I think, a lot I think we're focused on the latter. We've, yeah. we, um, you know, we've spent some energy uh, trying to build an experience for both uh, personas, and you can certainly use Tempo in that way. Uh, the reality is if, you're, if you don't have a lot of events in your calendar, if they're just appointments or the occasional to-do or the occasional birthday, um, there's not a lot more value we can add besides just providing an alternative UI aesthetic. Uh, which is perfectly fine, and we have a set of users that use Tempo in that way. Yeah. Uh, but I think the really high delight and high magic moments come from those that have meetings. 
uh, and those sorts of interactions, and that's where we're focusing uh, our energy because that's where we can really shine. Another reason you're here is uh, you're announcing Android and iPad, right? Correct. Yeah, we have our iPad beta, which is uh, publicly, or not publicly, but there's a small sort of beta group available. I think we sent it to the first thousand folks on the list. Yeah. Uh, we'll hold this video for the minute it's out uh, in the store. So. <laughs> so it's out now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we have the uh, uh, Android beta coming out very soon. So we're uh, making Tempo pervasive. Uh, you know, I think people want to use the same experience with their applications on each of their screens and for us these are just different modalities for you to interface with an assistant yeah it's been a while since we talked what has changed about tempo in the last year since since you launched well i think when we first launched uh we probably bit off a little bit more than we could chew we had the crazy sort of launch and we had the uh not by design reservation line to sort of deal with that which we didn't really like uh, so fortunately, that's sort of behind us, and we uh, 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 have it's scaled. A good, it's a good problem for an entrepreneur to have too many customers who want yes, to use your it, product. Yes, it, it is a good problem. It is something where even if you had asked me a month prior to launch, hey, Raj, can you handle X number of users? I would have probably said, why would we need to handle that many users? That's not the engineering priority. Like, that's, that's like too many zeros. Like, there's no way we'd get that kind of number. So, so it's... it's, it's uh, uh, it, it is a good problem, and we sort of we. Uh, it was a stressful month, but we uh, worked through that. So, um, I think the key thing uh, has been uh, when we launched Tempo, we launched as a sort of full replacement experience, and we found that we have two sets of users. We have some users that use it daily, and we have some users that use it weekly. And what's interesting about the weekly user is why are you using it weekly? Uh, because it's a calendar, shouldn't you be using it every day? And we have found that they want to use a lot of the smart things and sort of assistant and predictive things that we do. Uh, but on an as-needed basis. And, and that was sort of an interesting revelation for us. And so I think um, some of the things that you've seen and some of the transformations even coming uh, is positioning Tempo to not only optionally could be a replacement, but could also be a companion. Uh, and then the key sort of goal, if you choose to use Tempo as a companion, is what is the best ways or modalities that we could surface assistant-like experiences, whether it's through notifications or other sorts of ways. And we should take on privacy right up front, because uh, it asks you to look at your email, and sure. it looks at your calendar, it asks me for my Twitter, it asks me for my Facebook, and it, it probably asks me for something else, LinkedIn, I'm not sure. Sure. Um, what do you need all that access for? <laughs> yeah. And what do you get in trade for your privacy? Yeah, so there's a lot so of we've, we've sort of adopted best practices around that. So every single thing you sort of connect, um, there's a direct feature value prop uh, displayed in line. You're connecting this because this is what we can do for you. Um, and everything is opt-in. Uh, so obviously you don't have to connect it if you don't want to. And then we've taken it a step further. Uh, we don't really store anything. Uh, we store metadata. Uh, and things that we learn and proxy against that data and computation, et cetera, but we don't really store any raw data. And that's sort of really, really nice uh, in that uh, we've become even more enterprise friendly uh, from that sort of perspective. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, you connect your calendar, Tempo is able to understand intent. It knows what you're doing, where you're going, who you're going to meet. We have 74 different classifications in our system. We use that to figure out what's the best things to suggest to you, whether people, whether it's automating a conference call, whether it's a flight status, whatever it is. You connect your email, we can surface the relevant email and documents uh, next to your meeting. Uh, that's an experience you're accustomed to doing on your desktop. It's an integrated experience between calendar and mail, but on mobile it's been separated, so we're bringing it together for you. Uh, you connect your Twitter, your Facebook, your LinkedIn. Uh, obviously with Facebook, we bring in Facebook birthdays and events, but you connect uh, in addition to that with all of those three resources, we deliver you insights about the people you meet. And our insights are not shallow. They're not just sort of a collection of, you know, here's his profile data. It's, it's not that. It's yeah. deep sort of insights. They're correlated. Uh, they're extrapolated. If you followed the Giants on Twitter, we'll tell you he's a fan of the Giants. Um, it's very, very sort of cool, and it's going to continue to get better, especially as we surface more things from the calendar data that we know about you. Yeah, it's, it's really, you know, my Google, so my main calendar is Google. Right? Sure. And my social calendar is Facebook. Sure. But I noticed uh, lately that more and more industry events are getting communicated through Facebook. Right. So I'm adding those to my calendar, and Tempo mixes them together. Yeah. Right? So even my wife uh, does date night on Facebook <clears throat> because she knows that's how to get my attention. Right. <laughs> and get it added to the calendar, right, in a very easy way. And if she asked to, if, if we're going to a, a concert with uh, our best friends, 
it's a way for them for for her to get them yep. on the calendar as so well. I, so what's fascinating is I think the average user in Tempo has six calendars. Yeah. Um, and obviously one of those is probably the Facebook birthday calendar and the Facebook events calendar. But what's amazing is they have that many calendars. Uh, they have subscribed. And so uh, what we've seen is people maintain different calendars. They subscribe to interesting calendars, whatever it might be, sports calendars, whatnot. Yeah. Um, and then they choose how they want to view it. Where we add most of our value, of course, is in, the, is in those events where there's people uh, and people you're meeting. Yeah. Can we see what it looks like and uh, maybe talk through three or four of the really cool features that are sure. going to be different? The key thing is we brought a lot of the Tempo experience to the iPad. Uh, so, you know, I can open up our meeting, uh, Robert, and so we sort of display the meeting here. And we do some of the nice things that you'd want to us to do, you know, whether it's drive time to the location. And, you know, Google Now is really nice about telling you the drive time to the next meeting, but you yeah. open up Tempo, you get the drive time for your whole day. Yeah. Uh, and that's really kind of sometimes you want to plan. <laughs> so you want to look a little bit more than just sort of one meeting next, and that's sort of nice. And that's a good a, a point where I think you could really uh, change this from being a calendar kind of company to being a service company. Because I, right now, I, when I go to my next driving meeting, I have to pull up Spotify for my music, <laughs> ways for how long yeah, it's yeah. going to take, and then uh, you glimpse, answer. glimpse maybe if I'm going to be late. I have to uh, glimpse the person on the other side and say I'm running late, and sure. here's where I am, and I, I can already tell by looking at ways I'm going to hit a lot of traffic. So, yep. so you can, you know. No, I think, I think, you know, uh, um, I don't know if you remember when we first launched our sort of uh, uh, pseudo tagline was connect the dots. Yeah. Uh, and it was very much these, we considered these dots, whether they're data sources, their apps, app, app, different apps and services you use. How can we pull together the most common set of actions to help you reduce tap save time? So yeah. absolutely. I mean, we've, we've preserved many of those actions. If you want to just find parking for where you're going to, you can do that. Uh, you know, there's a lot of sort of the use cases that you have within Temp, but we brought it into the iPad. If, if one of my meetings is uh, fly uh, at SFO to somewhere, do you are you starting to think about hooking up to like United Airlines or whoever your airline is and say is the flight on time? We do that today. You do. Yeah. So so this is an example of the magic. Yeah, we do that today. So if you have a, I don't have any flights in my calendar right now. Those I'd show you. But if you had a flight number somewhere in the calendar event, uh, Tempo is smart enough to figure it out, just like it discovers conference calls, and it'll pull in the flight status directly into the event. Wow. Uh, and so that's cool because maybe you're already there. You're already checking your calendar all the time. That was sort of the recognized unique behavior. We saw people open their calendar and then they jump into some other app, yeah. right? So if you're already there, why not just give them all those actions right there? Now, if we're flying to Le Web in Paris in December and it's snowing there, does it look at the weather and tell you, hey, you better bring a jacket? We, uh, yeah, right now it'll give you the weather at the destination, okay. uh, which is sort of nice. Uh, but uh, certainly I think that's, those are some examples of things that we can continue to improve. And okay. do better. Cool. I mean, even here, what's fascinating, I'm sort of jumping around here. Yeah. I put meeting with Scoble in my calendar, and I didn't invite you to this meeting, but it inferred who you were. Um, it's right there, Robert Scoble. <laughs> and and, and uh, I didn't know we were actually even going to be presenting this, by the way, uh, on, on, on stage. So this is not, this is my real data. I'm just sort of. <laughs> no, you, I think you initially wanted to, hey, can I just come by and talk about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> talk about what's going exactly. on at Tempo. <laughs> uh, so I hadn't even anticipated. So there's nothing, this is like real data. And I have 5,000 or 8,000 contacts or whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, it's. Uh, it's cool how that sort of has so because there are other scopes in the world yeah and the, but they're not on your contacts you know like you don't talk to my brother Alex um, enough, so. that's not necessarily true I may know other scopes but tempo it looks at communication history and then tries to take a guess on what it thinks is the right person and so it's a little bit smarter than just saying I'm going to do oh. a dumb address book search and that's where you're contextual because it's correct. trying to look for the context of this meeting correct what will help me out correct exactly Okay, cool. Yeah, you know, uh, this meeting, obviously, uh, I, had, I had parallel invites for this meeting, so I had another invite that's structured. Uh, I'm going to open up Bob here. Uh, so something where we have been focused, uh, we've been sort of very so focused on. So he's like a PR guy or an assistant. Correct, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, something we have been focused on is, is delivering insights about people. Um, and so uh, it's pretty awesome how much stuff we're pulling together now, and we're continuing to make this more personal, more contextual, more correlated, uh, and so forth from emails and communication. This is actually coming from Tempo's own graph, which is really yeah. awesome. So just 
we know who people meet at multiple levels. Uh, and the graph is increasingly growing, so it's, 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 it's in the millions. So if we had a calendar item like San Francisco Giants game Saturday at 2, yes. you know everybody else that's going to the San Francisco Giants game on their calendars. And, right? and who you know as well. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> yeah. No, and that's and that's where it's awesome. You know, you go to a conference, you don't know who else is there. Yeah. You know, but we can tell you who from your network. Do you do anything with beacons or with uh, location? Because let's say we're going to the web and we're both in the airport at the same time. Right. You probably know that if you're using GPS on on your ca on your calendar, and I my GPS so, is on my calendar. And, in other words, you would know that we're in the same building or, or sure. within half a mile of each other, right? Yeah, the way, we, the way we think about insights on people is they need to be personal. They need to be uh, correlated. They need to be uh, uh, deep, uh, but they also need to be contextual, as you said. And so if, for example, we knew uh, I was at a particular location, which I knew was a place you checked into recently and I'm meeting with you, we, we might surface that sort of insight about the person. So this is how we can go really, really deep with insights uh, about the people you meet oh, um, uh, using context. And I really don't care if it's iBeacon or some other supporting technology layer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we will take the insight and say, hey, let's make it a little bit more personal because we have seen, yeah. and this shouldn't be surprising to anyone, to the extent that you can make the insight more personal, you have a higher, higher click rate. Right, so you can think of it as the new form of clickbait. Uh, you know, you have uh, uh, news sites putting crazy titles to try to duck clicks. Uh, that's fine if you're, you know, you say something publicly that's just really left field. Uh, but when you're talking about personal data, the best insight is how personal I can make it and how yeah. unique I can make it. Something that you would not have correlated together yourself. How, this is a real interesting problem for a, a product guy like you are. How do you not go too far over the freaky line? Because you know, if if you're starting to use beacons, you could almost tell that I'm standing next to you. Your, your, our our calendars could do things because we're cl our computers, our phones are close to each other, yeah. right? And then you use GPS, you use other things. You could do stuff here that's scary to people, like, like uh, particularly if they're sensitive to being stalked or whatnot. How, how do you decide? Um, what the right thing to do is on the, I on think, the calendar with all this data. Yeah, I think the key collect. is maintaining some kind of opt-in metaphor. Okay. Um, I think something LinkedIn has done, which is pretty clever and almost worked as sort of a growth hook for them, was who's viewed your profile was sort of a double opt-in. Yeah. You opt-in and you get to see, uh, but you have to share. Um, and we're taking that kind of approach as we think about insights um, and the kinds of people or company or other calendar insights that we can deliver. Uh, um, allowing the user to choose whether they want to share or not. But yeah. what, what's fascinating is the information is so sticky and so unique because there really is no other way to get it yeah. um, because you're not, a, you're, not a machine. you're not a machine. You can't look at 400 pieces of data and figure out how to correlate all of this yeah. um, that you're likely going to want to opt in <laughs> to sort of get that experience and that plays well for us. Are you looking at other kinds of social signals? I and mean, here's where I'm going with this. Um, Mark Benioff on Facebook Facebook said, I, I just went to Pabu, which is a sushi restaurant here, a new sushi restaurant here in San Francisco. Okay. And he said it was extraordinary. So when Scott Jordan and Jeremiah and I were like, hey, where should we go for dinner? We remember, uh, Jeremiah remembered the Facebook item that Benioff had said about this restaurant and said, why don't we go to the place that Benioff went yeah. to? It was good enough for him. It might be good enough for us yeah. too. <laughs> you know? Suggested and, a location, and it was extraordinary, by the way. Okay. So, <laughs> so is there, yeah. So, is there a way to signal to the calendar, hey, we're looking for a place to dinner that's different, maybe than we would find out about on Yelp? I think, yeah, uh, like I'm not ready to talk about all of this yet, okay. but I think, um, uh, I think to the extent that we can mine calendar data, which we have been for the last year, um, and then correlate it across different users, there's some fascinating insights that we can surface to you. Um, that are what I call out of context, which means when you, when you use Tempo today, you really are focused about the next event, uh, but it, it doesn't provide us a great uh, opportunity to tell you about next week uh, or uh, later this week or next month. Uh, and so we know when you have a gap in your calendar, hey, you're in San Francisco today and he's not normally in San Francisco and he has a three hour gap. Maybe we should tell him who we should meet or you're traveling to China next month and you're not really familiar with their business customs, you know, yeah. wh whatever it might be, right? So I think there's a lot of interesting stuff that we can do uh, through our understanding of that data. And I think what you're going to see in the fall 
is how we ultimately will present that uh, to the user. We all, all are looking to have a better experience. I mean, yes. if President Obama called your phone right now, you're leaving this interview. <laughs> <laughs> As I know the hierarchy of life, right? And I, yeah. don't, I don't come up to that high, uh, hierarchy, right? And we're always like in play. Even when we were walking in the restaurant, we're like, is there really a better place than this? Or yeah. is this the best place, right? <laughs> we're looking at each other like, we don't know because well, we have it's very personal there. too. It's very personal and we're always in play. Is there a, a, a way that you're thinking of uh, how to improve your life through the calendar that way, you know, and say, hey, you're going to XYZ Sushi restaurant Friday night. Did you know about this other one that's really hot with all your friends? Yeah. And, I think I think this is the I think the the, the key. So I think there's a couple parts to that answer. So one, yeah. um, we we classify calendar as I mentioned earlier, and we have 74-ish classifications. So we know how you spend your time, uh, whether you're working too much or having too many lunches or too many dinners or too many one-on-ones or whatever it might be. Or Don't tell my boss about that again. Right? <laughs> so the question is like, you know, we could we just haven't very easily surface um, uh, a visualization of your own quantified self from a calendar perspective. Uh, and that could be interesting. Uh, but then taking it a step further and saying, okay, if you look at that data and you compare it to other people within the network that he knows, should we start sharing locations and sharing uh, interesting restaurants or interesting events and things like that? And so those are things that we're thinking about. And I think the key thing here is making sure we can do it in a privacy-friendly sort of way um, and, and making sure it adds value and we stay focused. Because uh, you know, if you look at Google now, I think the team is like two or 300 people now and they have 110 different cards. and there's just too much breath. Uh, and I think they struggle from the sort of problem that two people can't describe it the same way. Uh, and so um, our sort of goal is stay focused. Calendar is sort of our primary signal, and that's where we're going to correlate data. Do, do you see Google now as your co competition no. instead of another? No, I think, it's a great, I think it's a great metaphor example of, of a uh, breadth-focused sort of predictive assistant. Um, I think with Tempo, we've been really focused on the mobile business professional, the yeah. sort of outbound meeting warrior primarily living on his phone. And, and uh, uh, we're going much more vertical and deep. But I think they're showing, I think they've done a great job showing the world what a predictive sort of experience can like uh, look like. Uh, I think what people are waiting for are like, what's next, what's next? Yeah. You know, like, take the next layer, next layer, <laughs> give me more. But this is hard stuff, this stuff isn't easy. What, one last question. What did notifications mean to you as a product developer? I, you know, trying to do an app in this world. How are you thinking about notifications versus just looking at the, the grid of calendar? Apps? I think I think notifications are super important, and I think the piece uh, that's missing. And I feel like we were one of the first to do this in January. We announced this is going back in time. We announced something called smart notifications, and every calendar event in Tempo would fire two notifications. It would fire a notification about the event. And then the second notification would be the action that we thought was the most correlated action to that event. So you could just swipe and immediately go there. I think what's really awesome with iOS 8 now is I can put it in one notification uh, because now they're allowing actionable notifications with iOS 8. So I think we can push that stuff further and further. And we're a pretty technology savvy company when it comes to sort of use of data and how we're sort of delivering things. And I think, uh, I think, I think it's going to help sort of realize that predictive computing vision. You, you brought iOS 8 up. What is that going to mean for a company like yours? iOS 8 is fantastic for us on, on multiple levels. I think one, uh, they're allowing us to integrate into the Today View. Uh, and the Today View, when you pull down the notification center, the Today, Today View is a great opportunity for us to do a predictive sort of widget of what, what's coming next. That's, like a, that's our place to put a card or whatnot. Uh, two, uh, they're making notifications actionable, uh, which is super valuable to us because it's something we've been doing in a hacky kind of way since January. And now we get to do it properly, which is great. Uh, and the third thing they've opened up is iOS 8 extensions, uh, which is similar to the Android sort of intent model. Uh, and so that allows us to register for a whole bunch of different actions on the device uh, where we could add value. Um, so for example, uh, maybe you want to uh, click an invitation from your email because you choose to use some other email client. You know, we're not an email client. And we'll open it up in Tempo, which is fantastic. So I think there's a bunch of uh, little things like that that they've done that you know, some of those have been in Android for a while, granted. Uh, that they've done that are uh, can be really beneficial for us in, in trying to deliver an assistant experience. Very cool. Where do we uh, get Tempo? Uh, so you could, uh, it's available in the iOS App Store. Uh, so you could just search, search for Tempo Smart Calendar. You can go to Tempo.ai. If you yeah, want yeah. to get on the iPad beta uh, at our website, Tempo.ai, you can sign up for the iPad beta. Well, it should be out uh, today, or is it uh, going to be announced today? Uh, the beta is out to the first uh, 
thousand people. It's been out to a beta group that we yeah. sent about a week ago. But this video is going to be held till. Uh, 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 yeah. Okay. It'll be. Uh, yeah. So then you should be able to get it in the App Store. Good. <laughs> Android is on the Play Store. Uh, Android. Uh, you can sign up for the Android beta. Okay. Uh, so so just sign up for the beta Coming groups. Soon. And, yes. Absolutely. But they'll all be here this fall. Very very cool. And you can go to tempo.ai, right? Correct. I think we're, we're still first.ai domain. Very cool. <laughs> well, thanks All so right. much for Thank you, uh, what you do for my calendar. It's yeah. real important stuff. Thank you.